Hi guys, it's your boy Shinobi Sage here with a review for Attack on Titan, the final season, not really, part 3, part 1, let's get it. Guys, I'm not even gonna hold you, yeah? Mapper Studio knocked it out of the park with this one. They adapted chapters 131 to 134. The rumbling scenes really showed the horrific terror of this disaster. I loved how like they added extra scenes of people running and scrambling for their lives. But I really like the scene with Eren's grandparents. That shit hit hard because in a way they did play a part into what's currently happening in the story. But man, the scene with Ramsey getting crushed was so raw and the events that led up to it was emotionally conflicting. During the flashback, Eren, knowing that he was gonna kill him in the future, starts lamenting and Ramsey's like, why are you crying? I was just like, shit man. You know the innocence of a child, you know, he has no idea what's going on. He has no idea what's gonna happen. It just goes to show Eren's drive to protect the island. Like Eren is a tormented character who seeks freedom, but the irony is he's a slave to time, or you could say he's a slave to himself or a slave to freedom, however you perceive it. But to him, the island is all that matters. Peace talks ain't gonna cut it. Developing weapons when you're 50 years behind isn't enough because that's not gonna remove centuries of hatred in people's hearts. To Eren, this is the way, the only way. This is true liberation, this is freedom. We then get a scene of him talking to Armin in paths before returning to the real world. Armin and Annie get to talking and it turns out they like each other. Even when I read this in the manga, it was kinda random guys, I'm not even gonna lie. For Armin, it's understandable because of Bertolt's influence and his memories, but Annie, I don't know. Like fam, even Mikasa was like, you. <laughs> Maybe Isayama just wants Armin to get some, you know? The crew arrive at the port and make preparations to save the world on some Avengers shit. The next day, the flying boat is, is being prepared to take off in an hour. Then this guy Flock appears and starts shooting and he's killed by Mikasa. And my man held onto the boat, fully injured all this while. If that's not a real Ye Jaegerist, I don't know who is. But he shot up the fuel tank. But as the engineers go and fix the problem, yeah, the rumbling arrives. Punji then plans to fend off the war titans. And she appoints Armin as the new commander of the survey corps. Levi tells her to dedicate her heart. And oh boy, oh boy, that scene of Hanji with the animation and the music playing in the background was excellent. And Hanji was so sick, like she was able to take out a few colossal titans. I remember reading this in the manga, it looked like she didn't do shit, but here, she was putting in work. This was a great send off for Hanji, a great send off. But even the way she caught fire, it was like this entire scene had a build up to it. There was anxiety because you fought for Hanji. The way she started burning and after that her gear blowing up, you know, we lost another one. Can't imagine what Levi is going through right now. This man has lost too many people fam. After Hanji dies, she wakes up with the other survey corps members. That almost brought tears to my eyes like seeing Erwin and all the other guys there. That was such a great scene man. The Suicide Squad then discuss their plan on how they're gonna stop Eren. The group plan to blow up the founding titan using Armin's Colossal, but then Levi says that Zeke is involved in this, being used as a battery of sorts by Eren to do the rumbling. So Levi vows to kill Zeke, and then immediately after that they get transported to paths. The Suicide Squad then start to plead and talk no due to him to stop. Guys, come on. This man is committing unprecedented genocide, slaughtering tens of millions. Even Eren tells them himself, bitch, if you want to stop me, you better kill me or die trying. I actually like this because it fits in line with Eren's character of not wanting to restrict one's freedom. So yeah guys, you know, the only way to stop Eren is to kill him. Back on the ship, Falco says he had a memory, not from Galliard, but rather from Zeke. And that was a dream of him flying. So you guys know what that means. We also learn something new about the female titan as well. She can use the abilities of other titans by taking in parts of them. So this means that the nine titans can mix their abilities of one another. Falco is the beast slash jaw titan hybrid. Annie has hardening probably after consuming the armored titan's spinal fluid like Eren did back in season 3 and she also has a scream that attracts titans which was probably taken from Zeke but because she isn't of royal blood she can't control them. We cut to Fort Salta where all of the Eldians are from the internment zone including Reiner's mom and Annie's dad but unfortunately when they arrive there Eren and the Titans have already arrived and the airships are being deployed to stop him. Then the commander of the fort gives a speech about how they hate they exploited out to the island 
has come back to repay them bam that was a very well written speech by isayama now one thing about isayama is very other than storytelling wise you know he's very good at writing dialogue scenes reiner's mom starts recalling how she raised reiner and she used him for her own gain and guys that shot of her hugging reiner <laughs> <laughs> guys i know <laughs> like the, the way it looks yeah of her hugging rhino and she's smiling like that is like bro it looks so creepy it's, it's so funny <laughs> they then begin dropping barrels of explosives on the founding titan and the colossals but to no avail Eren then manifests zeke's beast titan and looks and it looks very different even the way he created those rocks to destroy those airships, it looked very similar to the Warhammer Titan, don't you guys think? The Alliance then arrives, and man, shout out to Onyankopon for dodging those attacks from the Beast Titan. Armin, Mikasa, and the rest of them jump off the plane and in style, landing on Eren's back. And Reiner in particular looked badass, like the way he transformed and he tackled the Beast Titan like that, like that looked so sick. And that was a very good music choice they used for that scene man. Armin then asks Eren how exactly is he free and then the episode ends. Yeah guys this was a very very good episode. I think they adapted the chapters very very well. The director of this episode was Yuichiro Hayashi and he did a very very good job. You know this episode felt much more different than the rest of season 4. It felt much more bigger, more grand you know in scale. The second part has been confirmed for later this year give them all the time they need because if you're a manga reader the anime only is but the next half is going to be super action-packed knowing mappa studio there's going to be a lot of cgi so if they're able to keep up the consistency we got with this episode for the next half then i have no worries if you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe and until next time stay blessed